Okay, in this video we are going to check out how we can set up a product in EasyPost software. First I will briefly explain um, what variables or properties that a product has. You go to menu, stock and then products. When you go to product setup you can see the list of products that you have if you have an existing menu onto your left hand side um, in this list. Pretty much you got all the, the products in your menu in one list here. If you want to do alterations to a particular uh, a product, you can simply categorize or choose a category and hit refresh button um, so that you can view only the, the products uh, under, uh, in this example, the, the chicken meals category. Let me put it back to the way it was before. So, to briefly look at what uh, variables that a product has. I'll start from the beginning. You get the reference number. Uh, this is the unique number that uh, a product has. You can't duplicate this number. Um, our style of adding uh, items um, and as the reference we put uh, six digit numbers. Uh, the first three digit usually 100, 101 likewise and then the product goes from 0 to whatever the number of products that you have. So ideally your number is 101001, the next number is 101002 likewise. So in this example all the meal starts from 101 and the product goes from 001 onwards and then when you hit um, uh, drinks um, you can change the prefix the first three digits to 102 when you hit alcohol you can you can change it to 103 likewise in a way you you are you are group you, you group your products uh, based on the reference numbers barcode will automatically duplicate the reference number as you add uh, the details but it's there for you to um, enter the number of the barcode if you are in retail or you know hospitality environment that you use barcode to select your product in the system um, you can enter the barcode and the system has the option to uh, put up to five barcodes to a, a singular product um, most likely uh, an example that I can give, uh, give to you is uh, an energy drink and you get different colors. Your barcodes are different uh, but your prices are the same. So rather than uh, creating uh, multiple products into these different flavors, if you choose to, uh, you can select one product and add the, the varied uh, barcodes into the same product so that uh, it will pick up the same product um, when you uh, choose the, the product from, from using barcodes. Code. Name is obviously the name. We recommend you to put alphanumerics. Uh, try to avoid and percent signs, hyphens, uh, commas, and things like that. Uh, just be plain and simple. As you can see, we all use upper cases here. Uh, just a way to make it looks nice. Then you get the categories that you wanted to uh, put the product in. Um, so when you when you are creating a, a menu first you need to choose the the categories set up your categories first and then come to the products and enter your products uh, putting the product into the relevant category attributes is a special feature that we have um, where you can select whether this particular product is an entree uh, by the way this is most relevant to hospitality industry when you have kitchen orders and things like that um, so that you your order docket to the chef um, can be grouped as first comes entrees uh, number two is uh, mains and then deserts and drinks so when the waiter or the server who goes to the table and takes the the order in a mixed way you get the first person orders an entree and then a, a drink and then the second pers person orders a mains and then a drink likewise you have a mix of items but when you send it to the kitchen the system will take care of it and group all the entrees into one uh, that that displays right at the top and then comes the mains then comes the desserts then comes the drinks so that the chef does not get confused when you have um, entrees and things like that scattered throughout the, the order docket in this example, we just leave it blank because this particular customer would not uh, or, or prefer not to have that feature being a small setup. Tax categories, I believe, except for a, a very rare situation in a retail industry, uh, your tax is standard, which is 10% uh, in, in Australia, a GST. Um, and if, if your product does not apply, uh, does not get applied in GST or, or sales tax, you just 
get it tax exempt but most cases you will have to put tax added so that all products that you sell uh, has 10 percent gst on it sales price is the price that you sell including gst you just type it in um, or if you are in a retail environment some some um, uh, customers would want to have the sell price uh, or they decide the, the price that they are selling without any taxes. So in that, in, to serve such an event, we have this box here that you can leisurely put uh, your sales price there and then the system will uh, automatically find these variables based on the tax uh, that you choose up there, up, that, that with your choice up here. Buy price is a, a good variable that you can uh, fill in uh, at the time of setting up the menu. Think a bit of, a bit of uh, electricity, rent, wages, cost price of the product um, and things like that and add a value there because we have a lot of uh, reports that you can show profitability of a certain product, profitability of the business. Um, all these can be quantified uh, if you had the number here. Um, so that the system knows that these are this is the number of items that you have sold on a particular product uh, This is the sales price. Well, we have the buy price to uh, uh, subtract that and you'll get the uh, the gross profit of um, of a particular product Minimum order quantity is um, Especially when you are in retail or in a bar sort of when you have in a bar you'll have beers That's something that I can come up with but mainly in retail environment if you need the system to uh, uh, alert you when, when the stock inventory or the stock count is down, uh, going below a, a certain number of uh, quantity, it will, it will pop up uh, an alert um, saying that, look, uh, the, the, the number of units that you have of a certain product uh, after this sale is going below five. So if you put five here, that's going to be the, 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 the quantity of um, item that the system will alert you if it goes below uh, this particular number. We have seen order in catalog in uh, menu as well. In products, when you hit a number here, you can rearrange um, uh, the products according to your preference in a certain uh, category. So if you have favorites, you can move it up and uh, the set of products will sit uh, according to the ascending um, sequence of uh, this number. If you did not put any numbers here, the system will look up the name and then uh, place the products alphabetically on the sales screen. Button label is uh, an option a, a user has. Uh, if, you're, if the name of the product is um, very lengthy, you can shorten the name and this is where, this is what it appears on the, on the, on the, on the button. So if, if, your, if your product is too long and you can't see the price anymore, um, I guess it's, a, it's, it's an option that you can shorten the name so that the button has enough space to um, show all details. Now the most important part is setting up the, the order printer. First of all, you get two options here. One is the printer, one is the bump screen. Bump screens where you, um, uh, instead of a printer, you can, you can choose a, a screen where, you, where it displays uh, orders one by one, and then once uh, it, it goes past a certain number of uh, minutes, it will it, highlight to alert the user or the, the food preparer that this order is a little late, and then once it's finished, you can complete it and uh, take it out of the screen. So it replaces the, the printer, um, and it gives a, a paperless environment um, setting up uh, or, or prepare or food preparation areas. So to go into uh, 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 printers, we enable the, the printers with this tick, uh, with this tick, and then you choose the, the appropriate printer number uh, that you wanted to choose. EasyPost um, provides up to 10 kitchen printers and five uh, bump screens. So um, Based on based on your uh, configuration, in the configuration you can set printer num number. These are virtual printers, so you can set printer number two goes to kitchen, printer number three goes to uh, pizza section, Pr printer number four goes to the bar, printer number five goes somewhere else or shisha area, some, some shisha bar area, something like that. Um, so based on those requirements or based on those uh, arrangements, you can set this product to print in the kitchen or in the in the pizza area or in, in the bar or likewise. 
In the event of you need to print a particular product in two kitchen printers, let's say the chef wants to know what pizza has been um, ordered. So you choose more and then you can choose printer number two and four. Two being your kitchen printer, four being your pizza printer. So the pizza maker gets all the pizzas and chef gets a copy of it as well on the same docket that he gets uh, the, the orders of all the, the, the items that prepares in the kitchen. So just say cancel to it, we'll set it up to printer number two. Same goes for uh, displays, you can choose one display or choose multiple dis displays to print um, up, to five print, uh, up to five displays uh, of your choice. I'll just disable it for now. Last set of items um, are in catalog. This is the tick where you, where you can temporarily disable a particular product. Let's say a seasonal, uh, 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 a seafood item that you wanted to uh, disable just for the day or you know, for, for a certain period of time. Rather than deleting that product, you can simply go into that particular product and untick that and that will not appear on the sales screen. And next time when you're ready to serve this food or the stock is there, you can go in there and put, it, put the tick back. Service item is generally used in retail environment or uh, when it comes to uh, delivery, uh, any other services that you choose to not to maintain a stock level, um, you can put a tick here so that the system would not generate any stock reports to this particular product. Auxiliary is basically um, is where you see the star on the, the order docker, pretty much options, extras, choices, uh, and things like that. Uh, it's always a, an option to a main product. You can't, you can't choose it just by itself, like for example, um, uh, uh, a cappuccino. Uh, cappuccino is the main product which has the price. Two sugars is your option and it's gonna be an auxiliary. Or in a pizza environment, you get a, a Aussie or a meat lover and uh, anchovies. Um, uh, extra anchovies for 50 cents more and that extra anchovies for 50 cents more is going to be your auxiliary product. Although that op option has a, a price or not, uh, it chooses, you can't choose it just by itself, it has to follow a main product uh, with it. With the scale tick you can get the system to pop up a number pad uh, when you select the product. What it gives you is the option to put in the weight as you enter the product or the, the unique numbers as you, as you pick the product and gives you the option to, uh, to have less keystrokes if a particular product that you choose on the sales screen requires the quantity or the measurement or the weight uh, associated with it. I'll take that tick off. And then variable price product. What this gives you is the option to have variable price for a particular product. Here we have the sales price, but when you tick here, this is going to be uh, uh, disabled and then you'll have to, uh, in this sales screen, I'm just going to note to this, and then in the sales screen, if this particular product is a, a variable price product, you'll have to enter the price per first and then select the product. It gives you the option uh, for seafood type or seasonal items that you don't have the price that you can't decide on a price um, until you until you or the, on the day that you serve. You'll have products as variable price products and the server decides how much you're going to sell each and individually items for. Let's go back to the product setup. Covers all this and the expire leap time. Um, what it does is gives you, is giving you the option to uh, tell the system that this particular product has a shelf life of let's say seven days. This goes by the number of days. So uh, really applied to retail environment. Uh, at the time of bringing in the, the goods, we have a, a different areas to, to manage your stock, but, uh, and, and the reports to show you uh, what, when uh, that products get, gets expired. So when you have seven days, for example, as your shel shelf life, uh, the, the system will generate reports accordingly and tell you that, yep, on the first you have brought in so much goods and now it's the eighth, uh, you, you, you might have about four items that might have gone over the, the shelf life and it's time for you to go to the shelf and have a look. This is pretty much a photo at the back of the, the button. 
properties is something that you don't need to um, look in it's it's barely a technical um, side of it that for us to uh, fit around a little bit and the third tab is the stock his history this is again very useful when it comes to a retail environment that you can um, um, see individual items uh, gets you know sold uh, replaced um, stock coming in um, and things like that now let's add a new product these three buttons are universal throughout the program so we, we know that it's this is the add new button delete button and save button now a quick point is when you add a product and if you need to delete that product uh, you, you won't be able to delete it straight away because once you add a product and the system sees that it's an inventory item it's going to create other records which makes it you know um, uh, you can't delete the item what you can do is temporarily disable it um, and when you have a new product coming in try to change the name change the category change for pretty much salvage that uh, uh, unwanted item into a into a new item so let's go ahead and add a new product press add new all these fields will be vacant you always go go one after the other and before you type in the reference number you just check uh, what's the next available number in my example I have the last one is 101130 in a food product so the next available number that I have under food is 101131 uh, and I'm gonna tap next it will auto populate you'll have to have something on the barcode uh, because if I don't have an actual barcode I'm just gonna leave it as it is and I'm gonna uh, put the name as just keep it simple I'm, I'm gonna put it as test test product And I'm going to put it under entrees. And then in attributes, I wouldn't select an attribute in this example. Tax category is standard. By prices, let's say this product is $5 worth, including GST. And the, the, the cost price is $3.20. Not a good example, but just showing you the numbers. Minimum order quantity, it doesn't have one. Leave it blank. I'm going to leave the same name on the, the button. And I'm going to print this in the kitchen that's why I selected printer number two and this is not a service item this is not an auxiliary I don't need a scale it's not a variable product and that's pretty much it I'm gonna save it leave the order in catalog as it is or just leave it blank or put any number that you want um, it means that it's gonna choose the the or select that number uh, in an ascending order when when it choose to select or when it when it lays out the product on the sales screen I'm going to save that and go back into entrees and see how the product is located. Test product is in here. So as you can see, it sits alphabetically because none of the products that we had in entrees section had any numbers on order in catalog. And based on the alphabetical order, test product sits here. To quickly show you the, the, the variable price product, you might need this. Uh, to go into products, I'm going to choose um, entrees. Just type E there, entree, and I'm refresh, and that's my test product. And I'm going to put a variable price tick there. What it does is going back to the sales screen, table one. If I try to press it, it doesn't allow me to press the product. What it asking, what it's asking is nineteen dollars ninety worth of a, a, a seafood item, and press the item, and it's nineteen ninety or $8.90 of the same product. So it simply gives you the option to put the price first and select the product uh, to get away with you know, such, a, such, a, such a requirement. Thank you very much.